Robot music. In this video, you are going to learn how to find every note on the guitar neck. And this is so important because if you want to understand chord theory or scales or anything on the guitar, you're going to have to at least know how to find an octave. In other words, if you can name this note as G, where are all the other G's on the guitar neck? Let's figure it out. Mike's music method. Come on in. Guys, we are beginning an incredible journey here together. I'm going to start a playlist and there'll be tons of videos in this series where I'm just going to teach you everything I know about the, the blueprint of the guitar. And I need help. Someone comment, comment below. Please tell me what I should name this playlist. Like, mastering the guitar neck. Secrets, guitar secrets revealed. I, I need a good name. Like, what would you search in YouTube if you wanted to get better at the guitar? How to get better at the guitar? <laughs> Maybe that should be the name of the playlist. But what I'm going to do in these video series is explain to you how I learned the guitar, right? How I know chords and scales on it and how... Not every guitarist, everyone can think about it differently, but we're just going to understand the guitar. How to, how to play a C major scale here, how to play a C major scale up here, how to play a C minor, what the difference is, how to find notes on the guitar neck, triads, all of that stuff. That's what this video series is for. So it's not gonna be song specific. It's going to be general guitar knowledge, but all of this general knowledge is, is going to make you a better player in song specific situations. So I'll stop rambling, help me out with the title, How to Get Better at Guitar, <laughs> maybe that's it. Let's do it. Today we are talking about octaves. I don't know where you are at on your guitar journey, so if this little beginning part here is simple for you, skip ahead, use the timestamps below. But you do have to do some work on your own. So even before you do this video, you should know where all the notes are on this low E string. The way I learned was I simply just did the full letter name, so E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Don't worry about where all of the sharps and flats are, because if you know this is A, you know this is A flat, or if you know this is G, you know you can also call this G sharp. So memorize that, and <laughs> memorize all the notes on the A string. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. The way I did it is pick a song that you love, pull up the chords online, and just play everything as power chords. So instead of doing C, G as open chords, you're gonna find a C, eighth fret, to G, third fret. And you can play all of these songs as power chords, so you'll, you'll work on your rhythm as well, but you really want to start to memorize all of the notes on these lowest two strings. And then challenge yourself to do it on different strings. Maybe this might not be practical in when you're actually playing the song, but maybe you're playing your D way up here, then you're doing your F sharp all the way down here, and you're forcing yourself to do it all on the E string, then all on the A string, until you feel very confident that you know all of the notes, names on the E and the A string, and all of the frets. You have to do that. There's no way to, to um, there's no trick to that, right? You just have to memorize it. Some things you have to memorize, and that's it. So do that first. If you don't know how to do that, I've explained it. Take your time. This may take a month, may take you a week, may take you two months. I don't know. But do that first and then we'll continue with the video. So now that you know this note is a G, let's figure out a way to find all the other G's without having to memorize all the strings, without having to count up A, A sharp, B. There are patterns on the guitar. And once you understand where these octaves are, from there, you're going to build chord shapes into those patterns. So can I play a major and a minor chord there in that octave position? Can I play a major scale, a minor scale in that octave position? So it's so important that we ingrain these octaves into our, not only our memory, but our, our finger dexterity. That way we can find all these positions without really having to think about it. And that's going to help us build more complicated things on top of that. Let's do it. So if this is a G, anytime you are on the sixth string, the E string, you go two frets up and two frets down, or two strings down. So we go from three to five. Those are both Gs. And train your ear to hear that. It's very harmonious, very consonant. They sound like 
that sounds dissonant. And <laughs> when you're playing two of the same notes, you almost can't tell. Boom, boom. Or another way, can you sing the low one? Boom. Still sing the low one. Boom. And it sounds good together. I didn't even jump the octave. Anytime you're singing a G, it's going to sound perfectly in tune with another G, whether it's lower or higher. And now, of course, because this third fret is the G, so is the first string, because they're both the E string. So, of course, if this is G on the third fret, this is also G. And now remember this position, because if those are all Gs, if I move up one fret, guess what? All of those are now G sharps. So that pattern doesn't change. Just like you realize if you play a chord here, F, well, guess what? All of it moves together, so now this is F sharp major. This is G major. And you'll notice when I play that G major chord, look what three notes are there. That G's in there, this G is in here, and this G is in here. So you'll start to relate that octave position to different chord shapes and different major scale shapes. Some people call this uh, position one. Other people call this the E shape, and we'll eventually we'll get to the whole cage system, but, it, but it's all talking about the same thing, which is giving you a blueprint to understanding the guitar neck. And the more ways you think about it, the more ways you grasp it, just the more you're going to get it more. It's like when you learn anything, people will explain it to you differently. Some explanations will be more helpful than others. Sometimes you won't understand an explanation until someone explains it a different way. Then you go back to the other way that someone explained it and you, there's value in both. There's different times on your guitar journey where one explanation is going to make more sense than another. So be patient. There's not one simple path to get there. There are many paths to understanding this. So take your time. Don't beat yourself up. But I swear if you keep at these at this video series, you, you will get it. I promise. So those are all your Gs. Now, from the highest one up on the neck, there's my ring finger. I'm going to put my first finger there. And now we're going to build up the neck and find all the Gs. So from here, you might think two frets higher, two strings higher. That's not an octave. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to go three strings higher, and that's because of the way you tune the guitar. Right here, we use the fifth fret. These are all tuned by fourths. Uh, but that one isn't, so it messes up our pattern. It's the fourth fret there. So our octave is a little different because of the way the guitar is tuned. So now I'm going from the third fret, and I have to go three fret, sorry, the fifth fret, and I'm going three frets higher to eight. So I'm doing five to eight. Five is on the D string, eight is on the B string. And those are both G's. G, G. And now that I have that down, I just play it back and forth, get used to it. I go back to my other position, which is putting my ring finger there. And I'm just finding them. I'm getting comfortable with that sensation of what it looks like and what it feels like. And you might notice that if you look at these two notes, if I were to move this idea down to here to open and D, well, that's how I would play my D major chord. But we'll get there later. We'll put the chords in later, but I want you to know that it does build. Now, if we keep going from there, I put my first finger where my pinky is, eighth fret, second string. And now, when you're on the second string, you'll notice you can't go any further, right? Because you gotta skip a string. We don't have seven strings. <laughs> At least not on, not on my guitar. So here we go up, and we're gonna go two frets higher, but now we're actually going one, two, three strings. So I'm going all the way to the A string. So I got eight and 10 on the B string and the A string. G, 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 G. Doesn't matter if you, what octave you sing. As long as you hear that harmonious sound there. Same deal, you're gonna to wanna to practice, play both those notes, then put your pinky back to where that was, go back to that second position, right? I don't wanna label them. <laughs> I know it can be helpful, but some people don't always use the same labels. But just play through those so that you feel good about making your robot music. All right, now we're here, 10th fret. I'm gonna put my first finger on that 10th fret. And I'm going to go two frets higher, two strings higher. So you notice that octave looked a lot like your first one. It's on a different string set, but it's going from the A to the D, right? Two strings higher, two frets higher. So that one's the same because the strings are all tuned the same by fourths. Double check that you know everything. And 
in all your positions. I'm being redundant. From here, we go up. Just one more. You're almost there. Now, that 12th fret on the G string, I'm going to put my first finger there. Now my pinky goes, well, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Two strings down and three frets, right? Because the G string is involved, so the tuning's different. So I'm going from 12 to 15. The 12 on the G string, 15 on the E string. Which means what? If this is an E string, if it's 15 here, you can also play the 15 on that lowest E string. Now check all your work. You want to be able to think about these things forward and backward. And now you'll notice when we went up to 15, well, every time you go up 12 frets, you're back where you started. So three plus 12 is 15, which means that 15 is exactly the same as the third fret, but an octave higher, which means the pattern repeats. So we've seen all of our octave shapes. Got this first one, where you can do three strings, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one, where you can go to both. And then, oh, there's only five, because now we're back where we started. Right, this is the same thing, 15, 17, 15, as three, five, three. And those are all your octaves. If you missed anything, rewind the video. I think you get it. Now, practically what you want to do is to start put, putting these in different places. And instead of always thinking forward, think backwards. So maybe you're starting on a C way up here on the eighth fret. Pause the video. Can you find them in that position? Did you do it yet? All right, so it's eight. Then we skip to 10 on the D string. Then we have another eight on the high E. Now from there, let's go backwards. Because we were so low, we didn't really talk about going backwards. So from that eight, now I'll put my pinky there. And you'll notice, when did you do that before? Ah, it was in that fifth position, right? Where our pinky uh, went to our first finger. So the fifth fret of the G string. And again, if this is a C on the eight, that's a C also. So we did this stretch on the way up, but now you have to remember that it also goes backwards that way. And then from that first finger, I'm gonna put either my pinky or my ring. You might not know yet. I immediately know it's my ring finger because I don't have to do a big stretch. I'm going from five on the G to three on the A. And we're finding all the C's. And now from this C, or you might wanna check your work first. Do all the positions we did already. Then from this C, I'm gonna put my ring finger there. And that goes to the first fret on the B string. And you might notice already, wait, this, this feels familiar. If you add your middle finger, ah, we call that the C shape because that's between those octaves, how we build a major chord is we use a certain shape that we call the C shape. Yeah, you're learning, you're getting it. So two ways to practice this. First, pick um, a random note that you know on the low E string, and from there, build all the shapes. You can look at a chart that I'll provide here, um, but try to visualize it and feel it out without having to look at the page. So find them all using you know all the different notes on the E string. Every time you pick up your guitar, pick a random fret, 11. All right, can I find all the E flats? up and down the neck. The other way to practice is to not always start on the lowest string. Don't let that be your crutch. What you can do is pick any fret on any string. So I did the seventh fret on the B string. You can choose to go down the neck. So I'd put my pinky there, go from seven to four on the D string. Then from that one, I'd find them on the low E's. So two, four, and two. And then I'd also build up from that seven to nine on the A string. Line on the A string goes to 11 on the G string. So I'm picking a random note and finding them everywhere. And th this is gonna help you because if you memorize those two lowest strings, guess what? It, and I'll admit, I've been playing guitar a long time, but if you tell me right away to play like the eighth fret on the G string, for example, I don't know instantly what note that is. I always very quickly, and it only takes me half a second, I revert it back to that string because I have the A string totally memorized. And I know immediately that that is a D sharp or E flat, whatever you want to call it. 
So in my mind, if I'm playing anything on the G string, my mind is thinking of the note I have memorized on the A string, because I know that octave shape, then I have the A string memorized. So another example, I may not know instantly what the ninth fret is on the B string, but my mind very quickly associates it with that octave, and I know that's an A flat or a G sharp. Right, so I'm associating it to the A string. And I do that for, for all of them. I have the E and the A memorized. So if I'm on the D string, this one's easy. The third fret, or sorry, the fifth fret on the D string, I know it's the same as the two frets lower on the E string. So I know this is a G, so I know that's a G. Really quickly, what's this note? I might not know, it's C. I'm always associating it down. I already told you how I did it with, um... well yeah, so if we're on the G string, I do the same concept. That goes to a C. I know that note's a C. I showed you how to do this one with that shape. And the high E I have memorized because I have the low E memorized. You did it. I know this video wasn't super flashy, but I am telling you this is the foundation for understanding the guitar neck. And in the next videos, we will continue to build and build on these ideas. And the goal is for me to teach you everything that I know about the guitar neck and how I think about it and yeah, is this going to be the best possible way to lay it out? I don't know. There's, there's tons of ways that guys think about this. But I will give you as much information as I have and how I learned and thought about it and how uh, uh, many ways in which, in which I wished I had learned from the beginning, but I didn't learn it until later on. So that's what I'm going to try and throw at you. There will be a lot of homework. These aren't videos that you can just watch and go, oh, what great information. It, it, all of music theory and even fretboard understanding is worthless unless it's applicable. So grab your guitar, start applying these concepts. When you're playing a song and you're hitting a chord, test yourself. Be like, what, what note is this in this B flat chord? I always wanted to know. Well, now you can find that note and use your little octave. Oh, that's a, that's a D. And eventually you'll start to quickly understand all the notes in a chord. And, and there's so many ways to apply it. So get to work. Let me know if this video was helpful. If you have any other questions, if I could explain it better. But you got it. Welcome to the journey. We're going on it together. You're going to be a master soon enough, all right? I know it. Peace.